last few years, I really tried to belong here. But it never truly felt like home. The buzz around Star Trek Picard is running high as it'll be Trek fans' first in-depth look at a post-Voyager universe. You're famous. Fame is irrelevant. Picard will debut on CBS All Access in early 2020, with 10 one-hour episodes starring Sir Patrick Stewart in his iconic role. Engage. Now, Picard is completely separate from J.J. Abrams' rebooted Star Trek franchise, which takes place in an alternate Kelvin timeline apart from the majority of Trek media. Those Kelvin movies re-envision Star Trek as an action-adventure series with straightforward ethical questions, less talking, and more explosions. Go! To Trek fans who found this too simplistic and not in keeping with the comparative moral complexity of the television shows, Star Trek Picard appears like it might be a return to form. And there is no better person to re-establish Star Trek's hopeful vision of a future than Jean-Luc Picard, reprised by Stewart. We think we've come so far. Torture of heretics, burning of witches, all ancient history. Then, before you can blink an eye, Suddenly it threatens to start all over again. It would be difficult to think of another television character as principled and morally clear as Picard, who sought to communicate with his enemies and only use violence as a last resort. And he's not the only returning character, as we've gotten confirmation that Brent Spiner, Jerry Ryan, who will play a significant role this season, Jonathan Frakes as Captain Riker, and Marina Sirtis as Counselor Deanna Troy will appear. Judging by the trailer, the new show will test Picard's resolve and moral code by confronting him with the obstacles and foes that have previously caused him to falter. And here are 11 theories about Star Trek Picard based on the footage that we've seen so far. It's important to remember that Star Trek Picard is science fiction. There is always a scientific, if sometimes far-fetched, explanation for whatever's happening. So when a mysterious woman approaches Picard and says, Everything inside of me says that I'm safe with you. This is not the result of something abstract like fate. The current most popular theory among Trek fans is that Dodge is a former Borg who's been severed from the Collective. That would explain her innate connection to Picard, who himself was part of the Borg Collective at one point. It makes sense that she would feel safe with another former Borg, especially one whose memories and knowledge she had direct, intimate access to. I am Locutus of Borg. We see in the trailer that when someone attempts to detain Dodge, she beats up two officers. We hear characters exclaiming via voiceover that she doesn't know how important she is and doesn't know how dangerous she is. We even hear someone shouting, She's the end of all! She's the destroyer! This is not the type of apocalyptic talk that would surround one of the countless Borg drones. So perhaps Dodge has some type of relation to the only Borg who's been shown to have more power than the average drone, the Borg Queen. I am the Borg. The Borg Queen has persisted in Star Trek as a recurring character despite being killed at least twice. Her consciousness simply inhabits another body. Could Dodge be a surrogate body for the Queen or a clone of her? It would also reinforce Dodge's close bond with Picard. In Star Trek First Contact, the Borg Queen intended to take Locutus as her mate. A common reoccurring theme in every iteration of Star Trek is that the Starfleet Admirals are nearly always corrupt, selfish, and obtuse. I have a lot of friends at Starfleet Command, Captain. This gives the captains of each show a foil. If all the admirals were decent, reasonable people, we would never need Picard or Ben Sisko to step in and make the morally correct but difficult decision. It seems, at least in the trailer, that once Starfleet discovers Dodge's importance, the organization turns on Picard. It's why Picard assembled a crew of ex-Starfleet officers and social misfits. The traditional channels he once relied upon have failed him. In the 2009 Star Trek film, we learn that the Romulan home planet Romulus was consumed by a supernova, despite the intervention and efforts of Ambassador Spock. That, however, has apparently done little to change the Romulans' ruthless, pragmatic approach to space politics. There are several shots in the teaser that suggest that the Romulans are keeping Borg drones detained, experimenting on them, or both. We're shown a holding site guarded by Romulans, and in the background, you can see what looks like Borg recharging stations in rows, the types common to Borg cubes in Star Trek The Next Generation. We also see shots of Romulans performing some type of scientific experiment on a male Borg drone. We know that the Romulans are not above humanoid experimentation. After all, they clone Picard without his knowledge, which led to the events of Star Trek Nemesis. 
Now in the same holding facility, we also see the following text written on a prominent sign. This facility has gone 5,843 days without an assimilation. That means the facility has gone without an accidental Borg assimilation for a little over 16 years. Star Trek Picard takes place in 2399, so this facility has been open since at least 2383. But it's important to remember that 2383 was the last time an accident took place, and it's likely that the facility has been open and operational for longer than that. Rewind four years more, to 2379, and this is when Star Trek Nemesis took place. In that film, the Praetor of Romulus and the entire Romulan Imperial Senate was disintegrated by Shinzon, a DNA clone of Picard, who then took over the Romulan Empire. Picard defeated Shinzon at the end of Nemesis, which probably led to more than a little political strife as the surviving Romulan elite jockeyed for power. It's entirely possible that the Romulan experiment in Star Trek Picard is an outgrowth of that unrest. They may have been secretly attempting to weaponize the Borg while making public gestures towards peace with the Federation. It also complicates Picard's role, as the Romulans may blame him for what happened to their government, even though it was his clone who did it. Hell, there may even be Shinzon sympathizers who hate Picard for his role in Shinzon's death. We get a quick shot of a partially destroyed Borg cube. Now this may be the site of the Romulan prison facility. It's surrounded by Romulan warbirds and is being reinforced and protected by shields. Now there would be no need for the Romulans to build recharge stations from scratch if they were already available via the Borg cube. And thus, if the theories are correct, then we are left with a classic Star Trek moral dilemma. The Borg are considered one of the Federation's greatest enemies, and they are responsible for the deaths and assimilation of thousands of worlds. And yet, do they deserve the certain basic rights that would be afforded any other living thing? Is the Romulans' callousness towards them acceptable? Even worse, does Starfleet know and just turn a blind eye? It wouldn't be the first time that a Starfleet Admiral was an amoral clod. I fear that they How dare you! Picard is well known for his protectiveness over all life. In Season 5 of TNG, he attempted to communicate with the Crystalline Entity, a non-verbal massive creature that destroyed a Starfleet colony, even though it would have been many people's first instinct to destroy it immediately before learning why. I would argue that the Crystalline Entity has as much right to be here as we do. And he also had the opportunity to destroy the Borg by sending a drone back to the Collective with a malware program to infect the Collective. But Picard decided to decline that opportunity to the anger and exasperation of his superiors. If there's anyone who would take up for the humanity and dignity of his greatest enemy, it would be Picard, who always tries to do the right thing even when his decision is unpopular or difficult. You are Borg. You will assist us. I will not. I will not assist you. I. Jordy must not be assimilated. But you are Borg. No. I am Hugh. Both Hugh and Seven of Nine are notable for the same reason. They are former Borg drones who escaped the Collective and have struggled and succeeded at asserting their individual identities. And since both of them are in the new show, it's probably significant and deliberate. If the Borg subjects are being mistreated by the Romulans, are being unfairly detained, or are being experimented upon without their consent, Hugh and Seven of Nine are the living proof of a human rights violation. The original people clearly do still exist underneath the Borg technology, and they deserve empathy rather than indifference. This is especially true in Seven's case, she was assimilated when she was six years old but still able to recover her humanity. I don't want the game to end. I can see that, Captain. Data appears in the final moments of the Picard trailer, but is this the real physical Data or is it someone else? Data's original body was apparently destroyed in an explosion at the end of Star Trek Nemesis, so is this Data's consciousness in a new robot? There are two soon robots that look identical to Data, B4 and Lore. At the time of Star Trek Nemesis, B4 was simpler and less advanced than his brothers, but it's possible he's developed in two decades since, especially since Data uploaded his core memories into B4's positronic brain. But it's unlikely that Data would ever want to overtake B4 individuality, since that would be immoral and contradictory to his off-stated values. Now, Lore could be a better option. He was dismantled at the beginning of Star Trek TNG Season 7, and Data could borrow Lore's body. And it's not like Lore was going to be using it in the near future. There's also speculation that the data we see in the end of the trailer is from a holodeck. He's still wearing a Nemesis era uniform, and he still refers to Picard as Captain, which was true the last time Data was alive. 
And lastly, an eagle-eyed Redditor noticed that the rock formation behind Picard in the teaser trailer closely resembles a rock formation in Season 3's TNG episode Who Watches the Watchers. This suggests that we might see the Mintaket, a proto-Vulcan society that lived on Mintaka 3. Perhaps Picard visits Lyco again for advice, reflection, and insight into his current problems. I wish you good journeys, Picard. Thanks for watching, everyone. Let us know what you think's going on in the Star Trek Picard trailer in the comment section down below. And until next time, bye bye.